Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Our subject for today is lab-grown embryos, and these are raising ethical questions. This is our News Digest unit for today. This is all about science, and it's about human experimentation and things like that in the laboratory involving embryos. Yeah, we're going to talk about whether we should let scientists experiment on embryos that are older than 13 days. I guess that was the law earlier. It's still the law that、uh, after 13 days, the embry embryo has to be destroyed. Well, that's just 14.、Uh-huh. They managed to grow a human embryo in the lab for 13 days. Oh, they couldn't go beyond that. I see. Yeah,、mm-hmm. 14 is the limit. So they're getting close to the limit. So now they have to start asking this question.、Mm-hmm. Hmm. What if we go beyond the limit? Will that be okay? It's kind of creepy.、Hmm. See, they're doing experiments on people now.、Uh, it's kind of a, an interesting ethical question. We're going to talk about that. But first, like we always do, you guys, we're going to read through the article. A new scientific breakthrough was achieved earlier this year. When scientists were able to grow a human embryo in a lab for 13 days, this was four days more than the previous record, and allowed the scientists to study the earliest stages of human development. However, it also brought them close to an ethical prohibition, stating that human embryos cannot be cultivated in labs for more than 14 days. The 14-day limit was imposed in the 1980s. After 14 days, an embryo develops the primitive streak. The cells that become the head can be distinguished from those that form the lower body. Therefore, the embryo can be considered a true individual at this stage. This regulation had never concerned scientists, as they were unable to keep a lab-grown embryo alive for that long. Now that this is possible. Some scientists are asking whether the limit should be extended. This is where the ethical debate comes in. The more we study embryos, the better we will understand human development. This will help us comprehend genetic diseases, improve the chance of success for in vitro fertilization (IVF), and possibly lead to the production of stem cells that can be used to treat diseases. However, Many people see growing and examining embryos as no different from experimenting on human children. They oppose the whole idea of lab-grown embryos, not to mention extending the 14-day limit. Professor Magdalena Zernica Getz, one of the researchers who worked on the study, stated that this isn't a decision she thinks scientists should make alone. She hopes that both ethicists and the general public will be involved in a larger discussion that weighs up the two sides of the argument. As the technology is now in place, the time for a discussion on how to use it is at hand. Okay, everybody, the time has arrived for us to discuss the contents. Of today's lesson, it's our news digest unit today, and the title of our article for today is "Lab-Grown Embryos Raise Ethical Questions."、Mm. Now, an embryo is the basic form of a baby, basically when it、uh, forms into discernible parts between head and body and feet and stuff like that. When you can actually see it. Uh, you can see all those things as opposed to a big blob of cells. Then it becomes an embryo, and of course, if you have something like that, it will raise ethical questions. To raise means it comes up.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to start asking this question: Is it ethical? Ethical is very similar to moral. It just basically has to do with our moral principles, or you know how we make decisions. Is it right or wrong? Yeah, it's not legal and illegal. Sometimes it's just right and wrong. So we're going to talk about this. There's been a new scientific breakthrough that was achieved earlier this year. It happened when scientists who were in the lab were able to grow a human embryo. 
there for 13 days to keep that embryo or group of cells alive for 13 days. In the past, after 13 days, those cells would die or the embryo would die. So this was a big breakthrough. When you have a breakthrough, you make some sort of achievement, something that kind of signifies it on your way to success. I used to say, "Oh, I just had a big breakthrough in my career when maybe a director was really interested in hiring me, or I had a good audition and I got hired, and I thought, 'This is it. This is my big breakthrough.'" Athletes will have breakthroughs. You can have breakthroughs if you're a scientist. You can have breakthroughs in any type of career if you do something that really puts you on the path to success. Absolutely, and breakthrough as two words is a verb phrase. It means to break through something, to surmount a barrier, to pass a barrier, or something like that. But again, this is the noun form. This is a scientific breakthrough. It was achieved earlier this year. Scientists were able to grow a human embryo in a lab or a laboratory for 13 days. Okay, you might think, okay. A big deal. Well, this was four、mm-hmm. days more than the previous record, yeah, and allowed the scientists to study the earliest stages of human development. So this is a breakthrough. I guess they were not able to grow an embryo in the lab for very long in the past.、Uh, in the past, it was up to only nine days, but now, hey, they're in the teens now. <laughs> they're up to thirteen days,、yeah. and the previous record was nine days. Previous just means the one before it. That's right. So they extended their record for four days, and this allowed those scientists to study the earliest stages of human development. Now the next sentence says, "However, this is the problem. It also brought them close to an ethical prohibition, stating that human embryos cannot be cultivated in labs for more than fourteen days." Now, when you talk about something that's prohibited, you're talking about a prohibition. If you prohibit something, you ban it or say it's illegal. It's something you cannot do. It's an action that's not allowed. So, according to what is right and wrong morally or ethically, you can't actually keep doing experiments on human embryos because they're in fact little babies that are growing. And in the past, the rule was you can't experiment on human embryos that have been cultivated in the labs for more than four. Fourteen days. If you cultivate something, you nurture it, you help it grow. I think you can cultivate a talent. Maybe you're really good at drawing, so you take some art classes, or you have a teacher that helps you cultivate that talent, develop it, let it grow. So it just is another word for developing something. It absolutely is.、Mm. So again, this is a prohibition. You can pronounce that H if you want to. Prohibition. I say prohibition.、Mm. That、uh, word most often refers to a period in American history in which alcoholic beverages were illegal in the United States、mm. from 1920 to 1933,、mm. and you see it's capitalized. But here it's an ethical prohibition that just means they're not allowing themselves to grow human embryos in the lab for longer. Then fourteen days. It seems like they're knocking on the door of fifteen days now. So pretty soon they'll be able to grow them for longer. Now they're going to have to re-ask this question. Hey, should we extend this? Limit here. Well, the 14-day limit was imposed way back in the 1980s. To impose something just means you initiate something. Usually, it means you force something to be accepted or you force it to be put in place.、Mm-hmm. Um, you could also say this when you're maybe、um, visiting somebody, but they're busy with something else, and you say, "Oh, I hate to impose on you," which means I hate to interrupt on you, bother you, bother you, something、mm-hmm. like that. So this was imposed in this particular. Particular case imposed just means they basically started this limit back in the 1980s, which was already gee, well, 35 years ago or so. It's a yeah, long time ago.、Yeah. Things change, you know.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so here it is. They're talking about after 14 days. They're going to actually talk about the embryo in a different way. They say it develops the primitive streak. Primitive means an early or simple structure of something. We oftentimes talk about man who lived long ago as a primitive man wasn't very developed. So a streak can just be it can mean a lot of different things. Sometimes we'll talk about someone having a mean streak. They're usually nice, but sometimes they're mean.、Uh, so it's a little bit different than it was before. It's developing somewhat of a form. 
The cells become、uh, the head, and that can be distinguished or can be、uh, differentiated from the part that forms the lower body. So you can actually see that embryo forming a human being. That's right. So distinguish from. That's a verb phrase here to tell things apart, basically. So I could say, for example,、uh, I have some friends, Tim and Tom. They are identical twins,、yeah. but I have difficulty distinguishing Tim from Tom. I can't tell them apart. I can't tell which is which. I have to ask their mother or ask them directly. Are you Tim or are you Tom? Which、I、is embarrassing. It can be, but <laughs> if you're twins, you're probably used to that all the time, especially if you wear the same clothes and stuff like that. But in any case, here、uh, you can distinguish the head from the lower part of the body. So that means it has this primitive streak. It's some kind of marking that indicates that this is a developing fetus, and that's why they imposed this limit way back in the 1980s. Therefore, the embryo can be considered a true individual. At this stage, therefore, as a result、mm-hmm. of this distinguishing, being able to tell part A from part B, well, the embryo then is considered a true individual at this stage. It's not just a blob of cells; it actually is a functioning human being, and it should not be experimented on in the laboratory, at least according to the rule that they imposed on themselves,、uh, the 14-day limit back in the 1980s. Okay, so the next sentence starts out with this regulation had. Never concerned or bothered scientists before, because they weren't even able to keep an embryo alive for that long. So they never really thought about it much. A regulation is some sort of rule. It's an official rule, maybe or order、uh, that you have to obey. Lab grown just means grown in the lab. So now that this is possible and they can keep that human embryo alive for 13 days, they're very close to that limit of 14. They're now asking whether the limit should be extended. If you extend something, you continue something for a longer period of time. For example. For foreigners who come to Taiwan, we might need to get our visas extended, so lengthen the time that we're allowed to stay here. They're talking about whether they should go back to the governments that they're getting this regulation from and saying, "Hey, can we have more time to work on these embryos in the lab?" Right, and to extend is the verb, and a noun form is extension.、Uh, for example, if you want to stay longer, you can get. A visa extension, or you can get an extension on your visa, or your visa can be extended. Okay, that brings us beyond the halfway point a little bit, but we're going to take a little bit of a break right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest， 我是 Alice。今天我们要一起阅读 Unit Two New Digest 单元的 Lab Ground Embryos Raise Ethical Questions。首先，我们看到标题的 “race” 这个字 ，r a i s e race， 在此是当动词用，意思是引起或造成反应、感觉。例如 ，The recent terrorist attacks have raised global panic。最近的恐怖攻击事件造成全球恐慌。Race 当动词时，还有其他常见的意思，例如举起、抬起。If you have any questions, please raise your hand. 如果你有任何问题，请举手。Raise 还有养育、抚养的意思。此外 ，raise 也有募款的意思。例如 ，The foundation intends to raise money for the earthquake victims. 这个基金会打算为地震受灾者募款。要注意的是，有一个动词跟 raise。的字形很相似，那就是 rise, r i s e。动词变化是 rise, rose, r o s e, risen, r i s e n。rise 是不及物动词，后面不接名词，但 raise 是及物动词，后面要加名词。rise 有升高、上涨、站起来等意思，像是我们可以说。With the sun rising in the sky, the temperature climbed. 随着太阳上升到空中，气温也升高。接着，我们看到第一段课文。第一段课文说明科学家现在能在实验室培养人类的胚胎13天，这是科学上的突破。
但是他们同时也遇到一个难题。我们看到这一段的最后一句 ，However, it also brought them close to an ethical prohibition, stating that human embryos cannot be cultivated in labs for more than fourteen days. 然而，这也使他们触及一项伦理禁令。此禁令声明。人类胚胎不能在实验室被培育超过十四天。我们看到这一段的最后一句 ，However, it also brought them close to an ethical prohibition. 然而，这也使他们触及一项伦理禁令。这句的一个名词 ，prohibition, p r o h i b i t i o n， 是禁令、禁止的意思。Prohibition 的动词是 prohibit, p r o h i b i t， 意思是禁止。Prohibit somebody from doing something 就是指禁止某人做某事。课文的第二段说明此项禁令产生的原因。胚胎过了第十四天就会开始产生原线 （primitive streak）。原线能区分出胚胎的头部和下半部。这样的胚胎已经可以视为人类。我们看到这一段的第二句 ：The cells that become the head can be distinguished from those that form the lower body. 形成头部的细胞能够与形成身体下半部的细胞区别出来。动词 distinguish, d i s t i n g u i s h， 是区分、辨别的意思。Distinguish A from B 就是区分 A 和 B。例如 ，It's hard to distinguish Mike from Nick because they are identical twins。很难区分迈克和尼克，因为他们是同卵双胞胎。此外 ，distinguish 如果加上 ed， 可以变成形容词 distinguished， 意思是杰出的、卓越的。例如 ，The doctor is known for his distinguished research on cancer prevention. 那位医生以其在癌症预防的杰出研究闻名。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue our lesson for today. We are talking about lab-grown embryos. This would be of interest to you, scientists out there. So again, we're talking about them reaching the limit here of fourteen days, in which they can have a fetus. Or excuse me, I shouldn't say fetus. It's embryo. Actually, fetus is a little further on there.、Mm. Of course, they can't have a fetus in the laboratory. But、uh, can they have an embryo in the laboratory for beyond fourteen days? They're asking this ethical question because they've gotten up to thirteen days now, and they're almost to fourteen days, and they're wondering if this limit should be extended. Now, let's move on now to the third paragraph. This is where the ethical debate comes in. Okay, so of course we need to talk about this. It's a debate. People.、Mm. Need to discuss this.、Uh, oh, I'm for it. No, I'm against it. This is a debate. It's an ethical debate, which is similar to a moral debate. And the more we study embryos, the better we will understand human development.、Uh, that much is probably true. Yes, indeed, human development is something that we don't know a lot about. We get all these genetic diseases and stuff like that. If we know more about how these things grow and develop, we might be able to stop some of these diseases before they begin. Now the next sentence says this will help us comprehend genetic diseases, improve the chance of success for in vitro fertilization, which is also just called IVF for short, because in vitro fertilization is very long, and it might possibly lead to the production of stem cells that they've discovered can sometimes be used to treat diseases in people. Now, if you comprehend something, guys, it just means you really understand it, you thoroughly understand something. And when you're talking about genetics, you're talking about your DNA, those cells inside you that make you the person that you are. We get our genes, of course, from our mom and our dad, and our grandparents and our ancestors that came before us. So they think it might help them actually understand some of the diseases that we are currently battling right now. 
Yep, comprehend. It means basically the same thing as understand. And notice here that、uh, the author used the word understand in the previous sentence, so therefore the writer has used comprehend in the next sentence just to sound a little more interesting. Yeah,、here. in English we don't like to repeat words. I've noticed that's more popular in Chinese writing. Although Chinese has plenty of words for comprehend, zhuo, you know, liao jie, ling wu, some of the those are all words that、uh, talk about understanding or comprehending, etc. And yes, we're talking also about improving the chance of success in,、uh, or for in vitro fertilization. In vitro is the Latin phrase for、mm. in glass, basically in a test tube. Fertilization is when you. Uh, make something able to grow by providing some kind of nutrients for it. You will fertilize your、uh, your soil, for example,、Our、if crops, you want. Crops, yeah. Yes, if you want to grow crops, and possibly this might lead to the production of stem cells that can be used to treat diseases. Production, of course, is from the verb to produce, which means you make or manufacture something from raw materials. Here, they might、uh, develop these stem cells, which I understand are like really base cells,、uh, very basic cells in which. Which other cells come from? So if you can study those stem cells, you can pretty much understand all cells. That's right. Well, they're also seeing this as growing, examining embryos. This is the other side of the argument. It's really no different than experimenting on human children. And you know, you think about it. If these little embryos do become human beings, what's the difference between doing experimentations on children who are already born in these cells? So there's a big debate about this, as Tom said. Different thoughts and feelings and arguments on both sides. This second side who opposes this, they don't like the idea of lab-grown embryos. Not to mention extending the 14-day limit. If you oppose something, you are against it. You disagree with it. You don't want it. And not to mention is a way we write sometimes to really emphasize that the thing that follows is even stronger. What we're talking about. So they not only oppose. This idea of lab-grown embryos—they really don't like the extending of the 14-day limit either. So they're both things that they disagree with, that they oppose. That's right. Not only do they oppose this whole idea, but also they don't want to extend the 14-day limit. Okay, so of course you've got a debate on this. Some people are for it. Go ahead, extend that limit. And some people say, no, you shouldn't even be doing it in, in the, the first, first place. place.、Yeah. Exactly. So that's the debate there. Let's go. Go on to the third and final paragraph here. Let's talk about、uh, somebody that sounds German or Polish. I don't know. This is、mm -hmm. Professor Magdalena Zernica Getz. Zernica. Zernica. Okay,、mm -hmm. she is one of the researchers who worked on the study. She stated that this isn't a decision she thinks scientists should make alone. Okay, so she worked on this particular study, this research, and、mm -hmm. she has stated formally or said this: this is not a decision that's only just for scientists. Okay, everybody should get involved, including. Oh yeah. As we look at the next sentence, she hopes that both ethicists and the general public will be involved. In a larger discussion that weighs up the two sides of the argument, so she wants everybody to get involved, not just the scientists, but also ethicists. Those are people who specialize in ethics: what is right, what is wrong. Should、mm -hmm. we do this? Should we not do it? Is it ethical? Is it moral? Is it correct? Is it the right thing to do for the good of humanity? And they will be involved. Okay, involved means you are participating in this thing. You are not being excluded.、Uh, the general public will also be. Involved, maybe they'll take surveys or something. Do you think it should be extended? They、Dion? may be voting on it, something、yeah. like that. Yeah. And also in this sentence, we have the phrase to weigh up.、Uh, that's a phrase that means you just kind of consider different things and you look at the options and you decide what is more important than the other. And of course, you could also just say、uh, weigh the two sides. You don't need up, but they're both correct. Weigh the two sides. Weigh up the two sides. See which side you come out on. I guess、um, I think everybody has feelings about this. Some people have stronger feelings than others, but it sounds like they're going to take this debate to the public and perhaps let them vote on it. 
、uh, maybe tell your representatives how you feel. It's eventually going to be passed as a law in your legislative yuan, or if you're an American, it'll be passed in Congress. So the technology's in place; it's ready to go. So we need to get some of these regulations、um, in line before these scientists just. Run wild and do whatever they want there in the laboratory. It says the time for a discussion on how to use it is at hand. If something's at hand, it's right here. It's here now. Exactly. It seems like my opportunity to succeed is at hand. This is the crucial moment. I could get ahead right now if I just move. Right now, and so this, of course, is a very controversial subject, and we'd normally probably ask each other、uh, what we feel about、mm. this, but because it's so controversial, we're just going to let it go. And I think all of you could probably discuss this amongst yourselves. Is it right to extend that date beyond 14 days? Or should they not extend it? Or maybe they should even get rid of that limit and not allow scientists to experiment on embryos at all. It's a pretty strong ethical question in which a lot of people will probably have heated arguments about.、Mm, perhaps, so that, perhaps indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Right now, we're going to take a time out one last time and listen to our Chinese teacher. 最后，文章的第三段和第四段谈论这样的研究引发一些伦理道德的问题。我们看到第三段的第二句 ：The more we study embryos, the better we will understand human development. 我们越研究胚胎，就越能了解人类的发展。本句用了一个句型 ，the 再加形容词或副词比较级，再加主词加动词，逗号。The 再加形容词或副词比较级，加主词，再加动词。这个句型用来表示越怎么怎么样，就越怎么怎么样。例如 ，The more you criticize your child, the more reluctantly your child will take your advice. 你越批评你的孩子，你的孩子就越不愿意听取你的建议。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢收听。Okay, everybody. That brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much for joining us. We've had an excellent time here talking about things that are going on in the news. Make sure you join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.